Hello and welcome to the Low Limit Poker Challenge. My name is Ara and this is Ray. How you and doing? We want to uh, start off the video by saying congrats to Aram, who is uh, a guy that used to play at our casino. We hope uh, he still does play here. We hope he comes back and uh, you know does play at Twin River still. We don't know what his plans are, but uh, congratulations. I mean, that's a huge feat that he uh, that he accomplished, and uh, it's it's great to know someone. Um, that's actually made it that far. So congratulations. Yeah, um, actually when I was driving here, I was wondering if uh, he was gonna be here. Uh, not that I thought he would, he's probably still in Vegas, but um, yeah, it would be so awesome to like uh, come in here and like shake his hand and congratulate him. So we actually took a couple days off, even though um, the one, two challenge is uh, kind of going good for me. Uh, not good for me. Yeah, um, Ray's uh, been struggling. This has it. been three, three brutal weeks. I mean, I'm up like 200 bucks after three weeks. I mean. And we're probably putting in, I don't even know, probably 75 hours and I'm up 200 bucks. So literally like three bucks an hour and, um, you know, a couple normal bad beats. Um, maybe not playing so well just because I'm putting a little extra pressure on myself to try to win. Um, so that's why we took a couple days off. Uh, we took the weekend off just to kind of regroup and um, get ready. So tonight we are going to put a few hours in, try to get back on track uh, before we do a marathon. So tomorrow we're going to play a lot of hours. Um, not positive exactly how many, but we're thinking maybe like somewhere be around 15 hours. Um, we want to get here in the daytime. We want to play straight through um, until the early morning. And yeah, the idea is to uh, show up at noon and then just play straight through. So we're probably going to have some criteria, like I think 15 hours minimum um, of actual poker time with a couple of short breaks in between for eating. And probably, I was thinking of setting a minimum of like, like we have to make at least two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, session, I think two fifty, like two fifty for the day, which would not be great hourly if we play fifteen hours. But again, just because you sell the casino does not mean it's going to be a good day at poker. Uh, but we will be grinding, and um, I think we definitely could pull off a win in fifteen hours. Um, yeah. So that will count as one session. That's the goal to have like one session to bring our average uh, hours per session uh, up a little bit. So. I think I just thought of this right now while you were talking and what we should do for the next video is I'll bring up one key hand that you played and talk about the way you played it and the way I would have played it differently and then you bring up one hand that you saw me play that you would probably play differently. All right. Okay. And we'll kind of uh, contrast the styles a little bit because we both definitely make a lot of mistakes at the table and they're not always like big hands and we don't really bring them up in the videos but there's a lot of small hands where we might have made like a stupid bet for like $14 or we shouldn't have raised in the first place. And what it is is obviously you guys know there's many ways to play every single hand. You can just bet your hand, you can check raise, um, you can flow. I mean all these all these different things that are possible in every hand. Um, and you know he may float on a hand where I would have just folded and I may decide that hey I want to check raise here because I have bottom pair in a flush drawer where you know he'd rather let me call and maybe I can bluff on the turn instead of uh, on the flop where most likely if someone has a strong hand they're gonna go with it where it's much easier to bluff someone off a hand on the turn um, but a lot of times on the flop when you have a hand like bottom pair and a flush drawer you might actually be the favorite in the hand uh, so sometimes you do want to get it all in uh, when you're ahead yeah and um, those are the those are the type of hands where there's definitely multiple ways to play them so it'll be interesting and again I mean um, you know, I watched a lot of the World Series that was on TV the last couple of days, and I really enjoyed the heads-up play. Um, watching uh, Miles and Sin play heads-up, I feel, especially because they had so many big blinds. What, what time did they finally end at? I'm not sure. I actually fell asleep before it was over. Yeah, I, I watched, fell asleep at like two or three I in the think morning. I watched and... about five hours of heads-up. Yeah. And the blinds, I mean, they had on average at least a hundred big blinds, and for a while they both had a hundred. So I mean, they were they were doing going to two and a half, three big blinds. Um, you know, for the the bringing bet, um, and it was very interesting. There were there was a every there was almost a three bet almost every hand pre flop, and almost every hand was called and then played after the flop. Um, four bets almost didn't exist. It's funny um, because Phil Helmuth came on to announce, and he said if he could give um, Miles some advice, he would tell him to uh, start three betting more pre flop. And Esfandiari uh, was like, "Oh, Phil, I have to disagree with you. He's actually been three betting a lot pre flop. Yeah, and uh, he has, actually has been keeping the aggression on." Yep. Um, and so that was that was pretty interesting to watch, but I fell asleep and then forehanded. That took forever too. I feel like they played like a hundred hands forehanded. I ended up falling asleep at two or three in the morning. For the five hours but, that I did watch um, Heads Up, I did think, and it's not just because he won, but I did think that Sin played slightly better. 
I think he outplayed uh, Miles in a few spots. He was more composed too, yeah. I think. Miles had that huge bluff, uh, which I'm sure everybody has seen or heard about so far. And again, it wasn't a terrible play. I mean, he won the hand. Um, but it was a huge overbet, which definitely put some thought into Sin. But I think what it was, I do think that Sin knew that he was a slightly better player and thought because the blinds, they were so deep, um, he could just eventually outplay him and didn't need to take such a huge risk yeah. for his tournament life. Even though if he was right, the tournament's over, um, it still was a huge risk. He would have been a two-to-one dog if he lost that hand. And at that point, who knows if Miles catches a few good hands in a row, it, it could have been over the other way. From what I heard about the analysis afterwards was like almost no one would have made that call. Yeah. Like it wasn't that realistic. Like even though he was thinking about it, it most people wouldn't have made the call anyway. Yeah. Uh, he really didn't it's have It's kind of one of those situations where, you know, playing one, two, and, you know, it's like, um, you know, the first person goes to 100. And then you're like, all right, like, what do I do here? Now, obviously, you don't put them on aces, probably not kings, but are you really calling them with pocket eights? And that's kind of what he had to do right there. It's like, what is he going to 95 million with right here? Um, Sin did think about it, but I don't think calling was really, uh, I think he was trying to get some information. But if he didn't pick up any information, he was not calling the 95 million. It was just too much of his chip stack. Uh, but it was very fun so, to watch. I did enjoy it. Hope so, you guys did. So back to us. Uh, we actually, even though the uh, the one-two challenge is going kind of good for us, we've actually had some bad sessions at uh, two five. Uh, one day Ray couldn't come, so I uh, sold him half of my action on the two five table. Really, really fun table. Every single person on the table made two thousand dollars. One guy on the table was down like five thousand dollars and I was down $1,300, so that didn't go good. But then we both decided to play uh, 510 one day, and uh, we both did terrible. Somehow he lost aces to king high, and somehow I lost uh, trip tens with a jack kicker to trip tens with a five kicker. So uh, yeah, so we decided to take a couple days off, and we're back to the challenge. What is it, Sunday night? It's Sunday night. So, um, definitely gonna play a few hours tonight. Yeah, a very short session, and then we get the marathon tomorrow. So we're gonna give you guys a, uh, just this video as like a, a prequel to the uh, the marathon, and then we'll upload yeah, that tomorrow. Yeah, and um, so the last couple sessions that we played, um, I know the last one two session, um, I was down. You're down seventeen. I was right? down seventeen dollars, and I, I was think, up to twenty. Yep, and then the time before that which would have been session 15, I believe. We'll give you the numbers in the description. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a full Scroll update. Scroll down to the description. We'll, we'll, we'll copy and paste them in we'll the description. We'll do a full update um, and we'll leave it there. And tomorrow, we'll, maybe we'll even do a video in the middle of the uh, marathon just to kind of give us a break when we go to dinner. Yeah, and that's kind of Do a quick little update how things are going. Because again, daytime poker is going to be much different when we're playing in the afternoon than when we get to the nighttime session. Because we're going to be playing, uh, we're going to see all the dealers. We're going to see... The, the daytime dealers, the swing shift dealers, and the grave shift dealers. Um, so we'll definitely do an update and let you know how things are going. And the players are going to be different as well. Um, and so hours of the day. Uh, another thing, uh, we want to uh, send our love and uh, everything to uh, Jen's family. Uh, she passed away, and this is our first time back since uh, Jen died. She was only uh, 31 years old. Really, so we're definitely gonna miss girl, her. A great friend. Um, everyone at the casino really enjoyed seeing her. Um, it's very sad, very sad. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't even know what else to say because it's just, it's just something you don't expect, and uh, it's out of nowhere. So yeah, we used to hang out together and go out to lunch together, and um, I was definitely uh, thinking about her all day yesterday. So it's just, it just really sucks even more when someone in their 30s uh, dies because it's like, it's like so young, and um, you know what I mean. It's gonna be weird that you know she's not here anymore. So. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll dedicate the session to her. And, yeah, we so. will. And like we said, I mean, way back, if we go back to like video one, when we talk about, um, you know, trying to have fun and making friends at the casino and being friends yeah. with the players and the dealers and the waitresses. Well, this is a situation where we made a really good friend, a person that was there, someone we could trust and that we would chat with about poker, life and just everything. And now she's not there. So um, there is real life when it comes to poker. So. I think we'll right. just kind of leave it there. Guys, right, so have anyway, a good night. Wish uh, well, us luck. One more thing. Uh, after session 25, we will actually update the Excel chart. That Well, it's actually Google Sheets. Uh, give you guys all the numbers for the 1-2 challenge. And we'll also make a cool little graph so you can see the ups and downs of uh, real life poker. So, all right. We'll wrap it up there in 10 minutes and uh, talk to you guys later. Thanks for all watching right. and subscribing. Good night. Bye, guys.